Okay, so thank you. Today I'm going to present you our solutions for um, efficient and scalable on off chain execution for arbitrary application for um, um, Ethereum. So we are iExec. I am Gilles Fedak. So, first, let's thank and give a big kudos to the team because they worked really hard to be ready for Dev Country and having this release uh, ready. Some of us are here, we are at the booth just over there at the, uh, um, uh, at the outside of this, um, of this uh, conference room. So we are now about 13 people in Lyon, uh, in France, and we are going to be a little more formal are joining us uh, by the end of this year. So that's a wonderful team and I'm really proud of them. So what we are doing at uh, IXF, we are doing the Ethereum-based decentralized com cloud computing, which means that we are using the Ethereum blockchain to create a decentralized marketplace for cloud computing resources. So those computing resources that can be what you typically found in a cloud, so servers, applications, and data, data sets. And so we are using the Ethereum blockchain to advertise and provision those uh, computing resources. So you can think it as a sort of Airbnb for servers, but without Airbnb, and of course in this case, this is the blockchain uh, that creates those peer-to-peer uh, -peer interactions between the users and the providers. So having a decentralized cloud, why does it matter? For two main reasons, I would say. The first one is that we can see that in this conference, there are more and more new decentralized applications. It is coming a new uh, decentralized economy. And so we now need uh, an actual infrastructure to support those new applications. That's the first reason. And the second reason is that this, this this, this decentralized cloud, uh, the infrastructure is going to be very different. It's going to be distributed. And probably compared to the centralized cloud, we're going to have many advantages because the marketplace is certainly going to be much cheaper. It's going to be distributed, so it's going to be uh, greener and certainly more efficient because the data are going to be closer to the to their consumer or producer. So what are the, the applications we are targeting? First, we are looking at the blockchain-based uh, distributed application, the dApps, so the application that execute on the blockchain. And you know that the, uh, the Ethereum virtual machine offer very few computing capacities to those applications. The processing is very low. It's extremely expensive for storage and computation. And so they need off-chain computation to uh, have an actual, um, I mean, to be a really important application. The second category is what we call the legacy application. Those are the, ap the applications running now on the cloud that will eventually come to our infrastructure because we can offer a better price, per uh, price performance ratio. So here we are thinking of applications such as simulations, machine learning, uh, finance, 3D rendering, and so forth. And the next uh, category are those applications those data as close as possible to, the, to their origin. So people talk about, the, they're calling that fog or edge uh, computing. So with the, one of the key, uh, the fundamental um, point in the protocol is the uh, iExec token, it's called RLC. So this is a pure utility token. Uh, this is the way people can enter the network and use the computing resources that are in this decentralized cloud. And this is also the way a provider for resources or application are being paid. And this is very important also because it allows to create incentives in the protocol, and that's something that is really new compared, and that can be eventually an, an advantage compared with the existing uh, cloud and the way we're doing this. So we issued uh, this token on mainnet on uh, last April um, 2017. So the roadmap, where are we are now? So we started about six months ago. Uh, we are now uh, um, the, uh, the first version of, uh, of uh, iExec. So the way when you create a distributed infrastructure, it's a kind of a chicken and egg problem. Do you first start to have the machines and then in the network, and then you try to find some application to run on this machine? Or do you first start to with the applications, and then once you know the application, uh, you, then you can uh, create a relevant uh, architecture? So when we designed this roadmap for iExec, uh, the, we designed it by um, 
uh, starting with the application, in particular with the dApps, and then later, that will come uh, in uh, next uh, May or next June, we'll open the network to the servers. So it means that at the moment you can push any applications, but they are going to be executed on our machine. So you, somehow you have to trust us. But later on, in uh, next June, it will be any machine that can compute any applications. So we are very pleased today because we are announcing the first version of uh, iExec, and uh, it's called the Wanderer. Uh, so the way we are naming the iExec version, uh, we take characters from the Chinese novel uh, Water Margin. So I don't know if you know this novel, I love it. It's a story of uh, people who rebels, uh, who rebel against the, 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 the central authority in uh, Middle East China. And here, the Wanderer is the number 36 in the, uh, among the, the rebel. So this version one, it's basically uh, a software development kit that allows you to deploy your application on Ethereum and iExec. So I'm going to uh, present you how it works. So this is a video, but really I, I encourage you to, to, to try the tutorial by yourself. By yourself, it's uh, much more fun than uh, watching a, a video. So what you see here is actually a screencast of, uh, it's actually a screencast of um, a web page. And so you don't have to install anything to, to do the tutorial. Uh, you just visit the web page. And the tutorial is about uh, six, uh, I mean from uh, 10 to half an hour, depending on what kind of uh, test net you're using. So when you use the, sorry. So, uh, the SDK, so first you install the SDK, that's very similar to Truffle, so if you are used to Truffle, you will find that it's exactly almost the same. Uh, then we are here with this tutorial, we are playing with a toy application, of course, it's factorial, but if you are using, if you're installing the SDK on your own machine, you will be able to use any kind of uh, application. So when we start, we first get some ETH, so just to be able to deploy the, the contract. We're using a function which is called iExec deploy. So iExec deploy those two things. On the one hand, it combines all the Solidity uh, smart contract. It will deploy it on Ethereum. And the second thing that it does is that it, um, it compiles or it, it pushes your existing application to iExec. And what you've just seen here, it's the application what has been deployed on uh, iExec. So now what you will see here is that we're going to to use the application I use user. So for doing this, we first retrieve some uh, RLC tokens. Uh, we allow the, sub the, the contract to spend those tokens. And what we're doing now is that we submit a job. So once you submit a job, you can see that the, so I'm going to stop here. You can see that the, so when you submit a job, the job here is being computed. This is why you see pending and pending. So it has been accelerated, but of course it takes a much more, it can take more time. And when it's done, so this is the hash of the transaction that you got from the, the smart contract. And once it's done, you can see that you, 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 you finish the job and this, this is the result of the, of the computation. And you can see on the Explorer, so this is an Explorer we provide to see what's going on between off-chain and off-chain. And you can see the result of the computation in the smart contract, or you can retrieve it using our, our command line tool. So what is the, the deployment strategy for Wanderer? So what you have seen uh, now is that it's running now on a rope stand and on other uh, test net. So we are going to deploy it uh, in the coming uh, weeks. So first we'll deploy the SDK with our own uh, application the next two weeks. We are going to create an app store so that it makes the application for the end user much more user friendly because at the moment they have to interact with the smart contract. And uh, later on, by the end of the year, we are going to deploy this app store on mainnet, which means that developers using iExec will actually be uh, able to earn uh, RLC tokens. So what happens uh, under the hood? Uh, what we do is that those computations are actually 
executed on distributed infrastructure. So we called worker the machines that join this infrastructure, join this network, and that provide their uh, CPU time to execute the application. And so we organize those workers in a worker pool, a little bit like you have miners and miner pool, it's exactly the same, uh, the same idea, but here any worker can execute any arbitrary uh, application and not just mining. And what we do is that, that we have an oracle that looks at what's happening on the blockchain, on the smart, your smart contract, and each time the, the, the oracle detects that there's a transaction in the smart contract, it executes the corresponding application on the workers. So for version two, uh, it means that any computing resources can join the network. And also, of course, it causes a lot of, uh, of issues, in particular with uh, respect to uh, security. And so since this uh, September, we have launched an ambitious research program uh, that has started very well, actually. So we're working on two things. One is proof of contribution, which is basically a consensus protocol to verify that the execution that went off-chain, everybody agrees that the computation is okay before proceeding to the payments. That's one. And the second is some, some uh, security uh, uh, research that we are doing to protect both the application and the remote machine. So actually, proof of contribution is done by a PhD student, uh, Adrien uh, Croubois, who is a student at uh, Economa Super Lyon. Uh, for a more long-term uh, perspective, uh, we think that we are really lacking some good experimental tools to understand the performance of those uh, blockchain-based uh, distributed systems. So we are starting a PhD thesis in collaboration with uh, a lab in France, which is called uh, Loria. And those people, they are really experts in emulation of uh, very large parallel distribu uh, very large distributed systems, sorry. So why do you want to do emulation? Because it allows you to do experiments, but with an existing software stack. So it's much closer to the reality than just uh, doing simulation. So it's not only for us, I think uh, it will be very interesting also for the Ethereum uh, uh, community to have such, uh, such tools. Basically, you can test your software very rapidly on tens of thousands of virtual nodes. So some words about uh, proof of contribution. So we started this um, in September, about. We now have an early solution. It's based basically on uh, stacking and reputation. So Hadrian come up with a very interesting protocol. It's very simple. Basically, the idea is that for each execution you submit, you associate this execution with a confidence uh, threshold. And so workers, they have both a reputation, and the reputation is gained according to their past uh, work, so if the, the, the task succeeded or not. And they also have to stake some money, to stake some token. And so what we do is that each time we receive the, the, some results, we compare the results and we compute uh, a new confidence threshold, and if we can pass this threshold, then the, the result is accepted by the submitter. And so task is duplicated or replicated as long as the confidence uh, threshold is not met. And so at the end, what you have is workers who behave correctly. In this case, they receive the payment. And some who did wrong because maybe they, they tried to, to steal some money. In this case, we punish, we punish them. We take their stake and we distribute the stake amongst the workers who did uh, correctly. So the good thing with this protocol is that it's actually very simple. So it's simple to implement and then to verify also, and it will be also simple to uh, optimize. So at the moment, uh, Adrien is doing the performance evaluation, and uh, we are quite uh, happy with these uh, this early uh, results. The other thing, when you compute, uh, when you do an execution on a machine you don't trust, is the security. Uh, and so there are two aspects here. So one is the sandbox, sandbox thing, it's the technique that protects the workers from the uh, application. So imagine the application is a virus. What you want to do is to execute this application in a sort of a restrained environment where you control what the application is uh, actually going to do. So this is something that is not new. It exists for years, actually. There are many ways to do that. It can be at kernel level or virtualization. Uh, basically, here, the main issues are more with respect to uh, deployment. How is it going to be deployed? You know, to be installed by the machine joining the network. The second thing that is really new, uh, the second thing is how you're going to protect the application from the worker. If you don't trust the machine, how the machine is going, you know, there, there can be some privacy issue. So up to now, we had no solution for that. 
But since, uh, since some time, there is a new solution that, that appears. It's called Enclave, in particular thanks to uh, IntelliJ SGX, which is a, is a new instruction uh, set that, um, that are now um, deployed on um, uh, Intel uh, processors. We now have a solution for that. So an Enclave, this is basically um, uh, a memory space that is for you, where you, you execute your application, and even I mean, even root on the machine, even if you have privileged access on the machine, you cannot access to this memory because it's fully encrypted. And uh, the way to decrypt the, the memory is in a secure element in the processor. So what we are doing now is that we're evaluating uh, two solutions to execute our application within an enclave. One is called a SCON, something that has been published at uh, OSDI um, this year. And this allows you to run a Linux container in the enclave. There is another solution that we are looking at. It's called a Graphene uh, SGX. It's the same idea, but instead of container, it relies on library OS or a microkernel. It's almost the, the same thing if you want. So a couple of uh, things that are coming uh, in the, the very next future. Just after DevCon, we're going to run an Ask Me uh, Anything on uh, Reddit. Then we're going to participate to the supercomputing conference. Even though we are now in cryptocurrency, we still love those uh, big machines that, uh, that uh, you have at supercomputing. It will be in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we are going to organize a series of meetups, starting with uh, Lyon, so that people can get in the technology and use that and start to develop their own uh, application. By mid December, hopefully, um, the App Store for distributed application will, goes live, will go live. And so you will be able to publish your application in this uh, app store. By December, we're also going to launch um, um, a DAP development challenge. The idea is really to, 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 to give bounties to developers so that they can propose us some cool application. And we will be really happy to support them. And by the next year or so, we're going to launch uh, another program, which is the iExec Summer of Code. So I don't know if you're familiar with Google Summer of Code, the same idea. Uh, so it allows students, um, you know, everywhere on earth to work on uh, any subject related to uh, decentralization. So it's not only for exec, it's for everyone. Okay, so as a conclusion, we've been really happy to uh, present you this first step uh, for iExec. Hope you will uh, try it. Meet us where we have a booth. And uh, happy DEF CON, happy hacking. <laughs>